Hi everyone, welcome to Lecture 9C of Useful Genetics, where we're going to review a couple of studies of heritability in humans. We're going to talk about the heritability of human height and the heritability of human sexual orientation. So, to estimate heritability, as I described in the previous lecture, we need to find ways to separate the effects of genes and environment. And in humans, that's best done by looking at the similarity in phenotype of people with different levels of relationship. Identical twins, fraternal twins, siblings, and parents and children. The first studies we're going to look at investigated the heritability of human height. And they used a wide range of levels of relationship to measure the correlation between height similarities and genetic relatedness. So genetic relatedness is plotted along the x-axis. And you'll see it ranges from about 0.125, which is the relationship between cousins, to 1.0, which is the expected relationship between identical twins. And the level of correlation of their heights is plotted on the y-axis. We see a strong, this is just a legend. Here are the points from the studies, and we see a very good fit to a straight line, suggesting that there's a very strong correlation between how many genes people share and how similar their heights are. And from this, a statistical analysis of how well the points fit a straight line gave a slope of the line of 0.747, about 0 0.75, which is the heritability heritability in these studies. Now, the, this meta-analysis of data was reported in a particular study that combined work from other studies. And they also analyzed the data a different way. This time they took different re relatedness groups, but all groups who are expected to have 50% identical alleles. So they did parents and offspring, they're expected to share 50% of their genes. Siblings, they're expected to share 50% of their genes. Dizygotic twins, those are fraternal twins, non-identical twins, they're expected to share 50% of their genes. And a group that they called monozygotic avuncular, where they took one twin and the child of the other identical twin. These are also expected to have 50% identical alleles. What these groups differ in is how similar their environments are. Dizygotic twins have very different, have somewhat different environments. Um, parents and offspring have more different environments. And avuncular environments between an uncle or aunt and the child of their identical twin have even more different environments. But all of these studies showed about a 40% correlation, 0.4 correlation, between height similarity and level of relationship. Again, strongly supporting the evidence that height is highly heritable, 75 to 80% heritable in humans. Now, the next study I want to describe was of the heritability of human sexual orientation. And this, this again, is a meta-analysis of three different studies, all of which were studies of very high quality. They used populations. The three studies used different populations to draw their samples from, from Sweden, from Finland, and from Australia. They didn't recruit their subjects based on whether or not they were gay, but they selected people at random with respect to their sexual orientation. That's important in not introducing particular biases. They compared pairs of monozygotic, that's identical twins, and dizygotic, non-identical twins, and they had 
when the twins were ident monozygotic, of course, they were the same sex, both males or both females, but when they were dizygotic, they had both same-sex pairs of dizygotic twins and opposite-sex pairs of dizygotic twins. And each study had several thousand participants, lots of participants, and several hundred twin pairs. So these were very well-powered studies from our uh, analysis of statistics in model, module 8, you'll understand that it's important that a study have a large sample size, and these did. So what did they learn? Well, here are their measures of heritability. The Australian study simply looked at homosexuality generally, regardless of whether the person who was homosexual was a male homosexual or a female homosexual. And they calculated a heritability of 48%. The Finnish and Swedish studies distinguished between female homosexuality, lesbians, and male homosexuality. And they both found about 40% heritability for the male homosexuality and a bit more discordance between the results in females. One study found 19%, one study found 50%. Interestingly, there was no correlation between twins of the opposite sex. So if a male member of a brother-sister, a non-identical twin pair, if the male twin was homosexual, that didn't in any way predict that the female twin was more likely to be homosexual too. So that tells us that there are genes affecting male homosexuality, and there are genes affecting female homosexuality, but there aren't any genes affecting general homosexuality. So we can say, well, no, there's not a gay gene, but there are gay genes. There are genes that influence human sexual orientation. So we've considered the heritability of two human traits, each in several independent studies. For the height study, we looked at a range of different degrees of relatedness, perhaps I should have written degrees of relatedness instead of relatednesses, and we looked at the same degree of relatedness but different kinds of relationships, and they all gave similar results. For sexual orientation, the studies looked in different populations, um, but they all used twin studies, and they reached largely fairly similar estimates of heritability. Coming up next, we're going to go back to the topic of genome-wide association studies that we brought up in Module 5. And now that we've studied inheritance, we're much better placed to revisit it and analyze how it actually works and what the limitations are. So we'll talk about that in the next lecture. I hope to see you there.